Hey, brothers and sisters, it's the Reverend, and we're uh, introing a new video blog here. Welcome, uh, Mr. Larry Hall. He is the owner of HAS Productions, based in Las Vegas, Nevada. Larry got into the business the same way most of us did. He was a hot shit guitar player in a band who, uh, <laughs> who figured out at some point he was making quite a bit more money renting his PA to other bands than he was actually playing. And uh, God, that was what, 13, 14 years ago? years ago? 17 years, Seven ago. years ago. And uh, in that time, uh, if, you, if we pan around here a little bit in the shop, you can see that uh, it's grown just a little bit from that uh, carbon PA in the back of the pickup truck. Uh, <laughs> just, just a little bit. So uh, Larry's going to talk to us about the trials and tribulations of being a uh, regional sound company owner every once in a while here. And uh, I think you just you just put something up in the wild metropolis of Winnemucca, yeah. Nevada, that uh, that was kind of uh, a fun booking. Runamucca. Runamucca. Runamucca <laughs> is called in the town of Winnemucca, yeah. Nevada. Population seven, and most of them are whores in a whorehouse. <laughs> The rest of them are uh, um, uh, minors. So, no, seriously, they are. No, not minors, O R S, minors, E R S. Yes, yeah. minors. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're coal miners or if they're gold miners or what kind of miners they are. But yeah, so uh, our agent for my band calls and, and offers us an opportunity to play up there. Um, uh, have to provide production, which is obviously pretty easy for me to do. So, we put together a package and uh, he informs me uh, a week or so out that there's going to be an opening band. We're going to play up there for two days. There's an opening band that's going to play with us for two days, but they're coming in a day early. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday gig, and they're going to play all day on Friday, all day on Saturday, open up for us Saturday night, open up for us Sunday, play all day Sunday, and then they're out. And uh, so uh, obviously there would be some uh, concern with, with production and, and sharing some of the backline possibility or sharing some microphones or, or whatever. Um, uh, the agent, of course, a good friend of mine, assured me that the band was all on their own and the only thing they're going to need to do is plug their mixing board into our PA and go and do their own thing. Um, which brings problem number one up. <laughs> problem number one is we're not starting until Saturday. It's a freaking 700 mile drive to get there. We don't go on until Saturday at 8 o'clock p.m. Now all of a sudden the PA's got to be there Friday at noon. <laughs> so, Which was popular with your guys, I'm sure. Yeah, which was real popular <laughs> with my guys because none of them can afford the whores up there anyway. <laughs> so so now now we got to get up there a day early and uh, we're, we're loading the truck, getting ready to go up there and I finally get in contact with this other band who uh, uh, tells me that they don't own any microphones, they don't own any monitors, they don't on a mixing board that functions properly. In fact, the mixing board they own had three working channels out of 24 on it. And um, uh, so I said, well, didn't the agent tell you that you're supposed to uh, bring all this stuff up? Yes, he did. <laughs> and I said, so are you asking for help? Well, well, bro, well, bro, if you could help us out, that'd be great. Well, what do you need? Well, you know, we need a mixer, monitors, mics, a PA, everything. Dude, we're leaving tomorrow to go do this gig. When are you going to tell me? Oh, uh, well, I'm telling you now. So, so you know, kind of mixed feelings on, on, on the announcement because uh, in his defense, he did tell us that he needed the gear. And we, way better than finding out once we're 700 miles away from Vegas that he didn't have any equipment. Right. But on the other side of it, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you can bleep that out, right? <laughs> you know, what, what is this guy thinking? So I said, I make a deal with the guy. I said, all right, man, I'll tell you what, you help us load the stuff in and load the stuff out, we'll give you a hand and help you out. So we get there and load the stuff in. There's no opening band around. There's no. They show up about five minutes before they're supposed to play, put their stuff on the stage, um, start making demands in the monitors to my guys. And my guys are like going, hey, dude, you're on your own, you know. And uh, so they had to play eight sets on Friday. Wow. Six sets on Saturday. And uh, actually, you know what? They weren't playing on Sunday. It was just us on Sunday. So they had to play six sets on Saturday, and we played our one show on Saturday. And... Um, uh, they're, they're supposed to play to like 4 o'clock on Saturday and some bad weather blew in at about 3.15 um, um, 
and uh, they just packed up and split. And then, of course, the good weather came back in, and the uh, entertainment director's going, where's my band? <laughs> They're halfway back to Vegas, dude, you know? <laughs> so, you know, they didn't help us bring the gear in. They didn't help us bring the gear out, you know? And then the, 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 the crown jewel of, of asshole things that these guys did was uh, when they checked into the hotel, they stole half of our rooms. I didn't tell you about that. No, I didn't know about that. Yeah, so so they're a trio. They're just a trio. So how many rooms do they need? Three at the most, right? Well, they're a trio with a driver. So how many rooms do they need? Four at the absolute most, right? They had two double rooms. And two of the trio of guys, they were married, husband and wife team, right? So how many rooms do they need? They probably need two rooms. They look like they've been married for a while, so they probably did need... Now that I think about it, they probably wanted to stay on opposite wings of the hotel like Three Dog Night does, you know. But uh, so, so they, they needed a maximum of three rooms. They check into four rooms. I got ten guys. All of a sudden, I got ten guys that I'm short two beds. So guess who had, had to sleep together? The freaking 400-pound audio guy and 180-pound audio guy. I got pictures. I oh, pictures. Ken and James? Ken and James had to room together at the last minute, and we had to put the Ozzy impersonator a mile down the road at another hotel. Well, that's, you know, that, that actually no worked offense, out. No offense, Pete, that worked out just <laughs> fine. If you see this, Pete, it worked out fine for everybody. So, so uh, yeah, so we had to put him at a hotel a mile down the road. And so I go to, I'm like, dude, you stole our rooms. Oh, bro. I just wanted to kill this guy. Just freaking wanted to kill this guy. So, anyway, that's the freaking long and tall and shortness of it. And uh, uh, there was no hookers, no blow. <laughs> and lots of bikers, and bikers with Pomeranians in little baskets. Big Harley what, Davis and got, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's all these dudes, these big, you know, Harley Davis, I don't wanna say they were Hell's Angels necessarily, but right. they're, they're big biker guys <laughs> riding these big cool bikes with little baskets on the back, and there's like Pomeranians and freaking wiener dogs. No, no Rottweilers. No pit bulls. No pit bulls. What is this world coming to? Uh, there's something wrong. There you go. Okay, until next story. time, guys. <laughs>